Welcome to the Tough Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by Tough Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the Tough Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Uncle Taf, 28th of December, Taf Icon, the third Taf Icon, and it's Anti Satang Jao. Tell me, how do you feel today, Uncle Taf? Well, I feel good um, uh, to honor somebody that has uh, put in a lot for this country. Um, uh, Mrs. Satang Jao taught me at school when I went to Gambia High School in 1969, and she's been there up to 1994. So um, uh, she deserves to be honored, uh, like what we're doing today. And uh, we are doing this so that we will set examples for the young ones who are coming in. That don't forget those that were there for you when you were at the bottom of everything. And that is why it's a pleasure for us to end 2022 by honoring Mrs. Sapinger. Okay, well you heard Mr. Gomez, we're going to start. So Uncle Tap is going on stage, we'll see you later. Get it on. Okay, good evening and welcome to this double celebration with leadership and education at the heart of the event. But also there'll be, there'll be speeches, a lot of speeches, because speech or communication is central to both education and leadership. So you will see that um, on your program, there is cultural performance of Kora and Ngoyan, preceded by lots of speeches. But before going any further, I would like to call on our two volunteers, who are not the two people named on your program, to lead us in prayer. First, the Muslim way. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بقدر هبلي فارا بثانك فاتي لك دس we pray that whatever we do today, Father, shall be according to your will. Father, I pray you shall take control. Whatever we do from the beginning to the end, it shall be successful. Thank you for bringing us safe, O oh Lord, and I pray, O oh Lord, that this program goes successfully. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. The reason why we are here is Mrs. Satang Jao. As I said, it's going to be a night when we celebrate education and leadership People just have a natural disposition to follow a leader. Regardless of your level of knowledge and experience in a particular field, you can achieve more if there is a higher authority you report to. Hence the need to always have great leaders. And whereas some argue that leaders are born, not made, I am of the opinion that great leaders are made, not born. And the development of great leadership, primarily for our country, but also for a fast-moving world beyond our boundaries, 
is the raison d'etre of the TAF Leadership Academy or TAFLA and the TAF Africa family in general. Because after all, in one of their slogans, they say TAF Africa's experience is global and its focus African. I'd like at this point to recognize the presence of everyone, but particularly our graduating students and this year's icon. On behalf of TAF Africa, I welcome you all to this important event, an event that will see not only the graduation of 360 students of the TAF Leadership Academy, but we also honor one upright senior citizen who's been a good role model to young boys and girls who have grown to be men and women we all look up to in our society today. And what a nice coincidence that as TAFLA, the Leadership Academy of the Foundation, graduates hundreds of students, TAF icon is honoring a teacher as its third icon. You will get to know more about both TAFLA and TAF icon during the course of the evening. But by way of a quick introduction, TAF icon, since I have spoken briefly about TAFLA, was created to, and I quote, shine a light on successful Gambians who have retired and are quietly spending their time giving back to the Gambia by spearheading initiatives that would positively impact the lives of many Gambians and are not seeking any publicity along the way. Maybe five years ago when I was 60, I tried to think about what I should do that will keep me busy or occupied upon my planned retirement, planned on the line. I had planned that at 60 I would retire. But um, I'm sure some will ask the question, are you really retired? But that's for another day. So what I thought was that I need to do something to give back to society. After having been educated, well, born in the Gambia, raised in the Gambia, educated in the Gambia, and made my name at the global stage in the Gambia, I thought it is just right that I look back on the young ones who would look up to people like us and inspire, mentor them, so probably they can do better than us. So then I came up with my staff the initiative to set up a foundation. And that is what we have today, which is the TAF Africa Foundation. Now, in this foundation, we have seven, or today, probably eight initiatives. The first is TAF Icon. Some of you who's been around, or you've heard about the TAF Icon, which is a conference that we, ho we hold every year since the year 2016 where we just have debates on issues that affect our daily lives, regardless of where you come from. Then we have TAFLA, which is trying to mentor the young ones who's gone through their education, mainly from tertiary institutions, to train them on leadership. And the reason why we chose leadership, some of you who follow me on social media must have watched Woody Meyer when he interviewed me in Port Harcourt. And he asked me one question. And the question was, if you were to change something in Africa, what would you change? And my response was leadership. So rather than probably complaining, I thought, look, what do we do for, to our, for our future leaders? So we thought of setting up an academy where we've chosen 12 core values of leadership. So the way it's done that we bring them into here and then bring in eminent Gambians who are highly respected, who will give them a lecture, one hour lecture on every value. Namely, I'm sure even for those who are of the older age, should probably take this home, it's coded ice fade chip 
I C E F A D E C H C C H I P. And that stands for one integrity. We think that as a leader, you should have a, you should have integrity. Then commitment, empathy, futuristic vision, accountability, decision making, empowerment, confidence, honesty, innovation, passion, and good communication. So we bring in these lecturers to talk to them and um, it's once a month they deliver a one hour lecture ask them to prepare a paper which is submitted and after the one year, one year training program they are honored like today given a certificate of achievement now at this juncture i would just like to recognize and also probably thank those lecturers that has been with us since 2019 now, the Leadership Academy started in 2019 with only 50 in the first cohort. Then, in 20, 2020, we increased it to about almost 200. So it was multiplied four folds. And today, we are graduating 365. We had actually about 2,000 applicants, and they had to be screened. So probably next year, it will be bigger. And um, our target is within the next five years to at least train about 2,000 fellows. Now, the main event real today is the tough icon. That's why we didn't have any banner of the Leadership Academy. And we are honoring a woman who was my teacher. I went into Gambe High School in 1969. And Auntie Satangjau, Madam Satangjau, was there with Uncle Charles as teachers. So I'm sure in one part of the hall, they look at me, although they call me the youth man, but I am a senior citizen. But still, as a senior citizen, I have my teacher sitting here. And she taught from 1966 to 1994. That's a good period. With integrity and all that it takes to bring her here today from being probably an ordinary teacher to the Minister of Education in the Gambia. So she went up the ladder, she went up the ladder, you know, step by step. One of the sayings, one of my quotes, those who follow me on social media can see the tough quotes. And one of my popular quotes is that, and for the young ones, life is more of a ladder than an elevator. She's the third, after Mrs. Janet Bajan Young and um, then uh, Mr. Okodrame. So she's the third. As Peter said, if you are not 70, you are not qualified. You need to be tested. And she has been tested. So let me just thank those who made this happen, both at the foundation level and also on the le um, Tough Leadership Academy lectures. As you can see, we're in this hall today, which is owned by Madam Amilet and Mr. Modundao, the Paradise family. So we have had 12 lectures here, and it's gratis. We have not paid one single penny for this. So we owe the family a deep sense of gratitude and appreciate them. That when then the, thing, the lesson to learn here is that when you start good, others will follow. We've done everything possible to pay for this, but they have refused. In some cases, they have even returned our checks. So it doesn't cost us much these days. We, so we need to appreciate them and thank them for this. I would also like to thank the lecturers, I've already named them, for the time they have taken 
to give the lectures to these kids. My staff, obviously, especially for the foundation, Abyss. Abyss, I call my boss. You see, they're clapping, huh? Abyss, I call my boss because Abyss is my PA. Abyss is my PA. And Abyss was employed from the first cohort. So you see, we can see that these things are working. She was trained at the Taft Leadership Academy, but today she's the coordinator of the foundation and my personal assistant. Again, Anita, who joined us this year, she's doing a fantastic job as our marketing manager. Organizing these events is not easy. And Anita, not only has she been organizing this, she's also the head of media. Tough Africa Global is very big on media. All the tough hub that you see today, she's just kicked me out of it. Those who watched the last, um, uh, the last um, episodes, you will notice that she has taken over. And she does quite a lot of good work on this. The rest are my staff. Uh, at the head of the Tough Africa Global Management is my daughter, Yabajan, who I have just transferred all the stress. My wife, Jatu, is sitting there, and she complains all the time. And in her words, she will tell me, Because of her long years and commendable work in education, as Mr. Njai has just been telling us, Mrs. Satang Jau was rightly chosen as the keynote speaker for this Tafla graduation ceremony. First of all, I would like to thank the Almighty Allah for bringing us all together thus far in the year 2022 to witness this memorable occasion. I have been asked to give the keynote address and the topic I have chosen is education with specific reference to girls and women's education. I have a passion and I would like to inform this gathering that when I was principal of Gambia High School from 89 to 94, the number of girls in the school doubled. The importance of educating girls has been extremely and extensively researched and documented. First and foremost, education is a basic human right enshrined in international commitments such as the Convention on the Rights of the Child and at a, at a regional level, the Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the African Child. It is also widely recognized and studies have proven that girls' and women's education is one of the most effective means of development, not only for girls and women themselves, but for communities and the wider society. Girls' and women's education raises maternal health, reduces child mortality, improves nutrition within the home, and increases the potential workforce and opportunities for economic growth, which eventually fosters development. The Constitution of the Gambia in 1997 enshrined education as a right. It states that all persons shall have the right to equal educational opportunities and facilities, and with a view to achieving the full realization of that right, that basic education shall be free, compulsory, and available to all. And all, of course, means boys and girls. That secondary education, including technical and vocational education, shall be made generally available and accessible to all by every appropriate means, and in particular, by the progressive introduction 
of free education. That higher education shall be made equally accessible to all on the basis of capacity by every appropriate means and in particular by progressive introduction of free education. We will move on now to what is called the endorsement of the graduates. And what it means really is Alaji Mustafa Njai, Alaji Taf will from here call out the names of um, those of you who are graduating and from your individual positions you just stand up to be acknowledged. There will be no certificates given today, they will be given later on because if we are to give out certificates, not even midnight, we'll complete the process. 360, what, 465? So uh, without much ado, Alaji Taf. Graduates, we will not ask you to come up and receive your certificates. So, uh, I just call out your names, and when I call your names out, just stand up for acknowledgement. Uh, I'll start with um, Abdullah Ba, Abdul, <laughs> Abdul Aziz Banda, Abdul Aziz Sow, Abdul Karim Keta, Abdul Karim Sanyang, Abdul Aziz Baji, Sadu Bari, Ismaila Balde, Maria Masuno, Jaina Basonko, Katim Turi, Mami Sirajan, and finally, but not the least, Abdul Karim Keta. That's um, 354 in number. Congratulations. So can we ask all of you to rise up? and then you'll be appreciated together. Thank you. Well done. One chapter is closing tonight and another one immediately opening. Life goes on. We will now move on to the next item on the agenda or the order of activities which is well, it's supposed to be a vote of thanks, but I understand we have two volunteers, a lady and a gentleman. Thank you for this great honor and privilege to say a few words. I see before me all these faces brimming with excitement about the promise of tomorrow, which is a wonderful sight to behold. The leadership have encourage us, support us, but, but most importantly, giving us the building blocks to face new challenges. Now, looking at Africa, you come to realize that one of the problems that we have right now in Africa is leadership. And this leadership problem is not only in our institution, but only also in our families, in our communities, in our home. And I believe and I hope train this kind of leaders who also uh, make people to be better positioned not only in our institution, in government position, but also in communities and in our families. Tonight, right here, we are going to honor an academic icon who thankfully is still with us and among us. And for the next few minutes, hopefully before 7 p.m., everything you ever wanted to know about this year's tough icon, you will hopefully hear and more, as people who know Mrs. Satang Jao, our nominee, begin to bear testimony to the exalted standards that make her a deserved winner as a tough icon. Tough has a special surprise, and the special surprise is our first testimony giver. And um, it is somebody I know very well because I worked with him and uh, he went on to become a minister. And I would ask him very kindly to get up because this is a surprise for Mrs. Zhao. And, and once he gets to the podium, it's a he, so I've given something away. Once he gets to the podium, we will introduce him and he will tell you everything he knows about our icon. A round of applause for our first guest. This is Mr. Musa Silla, I believe now Al-Haji 
Musa Sila, maybe don't go get him to Yunjaka. When in 1981, I started working at Radio Gambia, Musa Silla was one of the top reporters of the radio station. Of course, he eventually left. Most people who started the Radio Gambia eventually left. I've had an opportunity to uh, give a statement on many occasions in my life, in my career. But this one is a special one. And it really makes me feel very nervous. It makes me feel very nervous and very emotional at the same time. It is like uh, going for an examination. The sort of feeling that you have, you don't know whether you are going to pass or you are going to fail. So why am I feeling that way? I am uh, standing in front of my teacher, a special teacher for that matter, you know, to make a statement. And you can imagine she's going to listen to me, she's going to correct me, she's going to say you have done well or you have not done well. You, can, you know, that sort of feeling is not easy at all. When Taf um, approached me to, uh, you know, make a statement uh, on this occasion, a testimonial, I hesitated. I told him I will not be here, I will be traveling. <laughs> you know, and uh, because of uh, that, but I thought again, this would be a wonderful opportunity to say thank you to somebody who has uh, really impacted my life, and I will tell you how. Um, Auntie Satang, as we call her home, or Mrs. Joe in the school, I came to have a first encounter with, with her in 1974, after my common entrance from Serekunda School. The uh, goal for everybody at the time was to enter Gambia High School. As uh, some of my Badibunka friends would say, Gambia la Karambumba. You know, you want to be in Gambia High School. That was my objective. And uh, she really played a crucial role to make sure that I enrolled in Gambia High School in 1974. And since then, not only stopping at enrolling in the school, she has uh, played the role of a guardian for me, making sure that my conduct in school was exemplary, that my performance in school was good as well. Because I know eventually, if I misbehave in school, my family will get to know about it, and that will be trouble you know, for me. She was very encouraging to me. She taught me English, so you can understand why I feel nervous to speak in, tr in front of her. She was very particular about uh, grammar. She taught me English language. She taught me English literature. She taught me oral English. So making a statement, you are picking from all of those uh, elements that uh, she has taught you. And as somebody who is very particular about grammar, I must make sure that I do not break any grammatical rule to know this evening. Mrs. Jiao was also very particular about pronunciations, English pronunciations. I had some Badibunka badi friends you know, in the class who were always in trouble. They say policeman. He said, policeman. Once you say, you know, cut, you just have to say, cut. You know that kind of pronunciation. The Badibunga could not adjust himself, you know, to that. It was a real trouble. But it was the learning process, and we all, you know, benefited, you know, from that uh, immensely. I say thank you also, you know, for really the effort you have taken to mold our character, to make us, you know, what we are today. We have moved you know, from the shores of the Gambia to elsewhere, and uh, we still carry with us what you have instilled in us. We cannot say um, uh, um, thank you enough you know, for all what you have done you know, for us. We only ask Allah to give you good health and to give you long life for us to benefit more and more from your inspirational you know, guidance you know, to us. I say thank you very much. Thank you for the Thank you.
Thank you.